What's up everybody? Welcome back to Golf Simulator Videos. We're back today with the Garmin Approach R10 portable golf launch monitor. Now, if you haven't seen our previous videos, make sure you check those out. This is a radar based portable golf launch monitor. The thing is tiny. I mean, it fits in the, basically the palm of your hand. We've been doing some testing with it. Actually did a comparison with another camera based launch monitor. Check that previous video out. Also did a video talking about all the specs and things to, uh, you know, basically understand about what's being included with the unit, which is one thing that we'll be covering today. So the Garmin R10 launch monitor, actually comes with a free version of E6 Connect. That is True Golf's E6 Connect golf simulator software. All right, it's an iOS version. What's cool is, is also can connect to PC. All right, they're using an IP address and port number to basically connect to PC. Um, so if you want to play with PC, it gives you a little bit higher edge of graphics. But what we're doing today is, is we're using our actual iPad Pro. All right, this is an iPad Pro 11 inch. I've shown this in the channel before. What's interesting about it is, is when you properly uh, pair it up, it's close to a 16 by 10 resolution on that iPad Pro 11 inch. So once we get going here, you'll see that I have this actually all the way basically eight foot tall on my 16 by 10 projector, all right, with two little black bars on the side. It's actually a very good image. I'm sure you can uh, see the resolution there. We're doing a screen recording um, and then also doing our kind of a larger camera so you guys can see what's going on inside the studio. So I wanted to just give you guys a quick brief overview of E6 and then we're gonna go out and we're gonna play a little bit so you can see how the Garmin R10 does with E6 Connect. Okay, so I know that some of you are familiar with, you know, TrueGolf's E6 Connect, so I wanna show you what's included. Um, so real quick, if I go into games, all right, there are games available. I'm not going to show the games today, but just understand there's a closest to the pin, long drive, all right, that's available. And then there's also events. So there's online events that you can play. Um, talking about guests and events, but you can go on there. There's different events that you can go out and actually play against other players, all right? And then if we go to the practice area, I'm just using a guest account just so you guys know, there's the driving range and chip and putt. I'll, uh, why don't I show the large target range uh, for you guys just because it's kind of cool. You can, you know, basically select the target that you want to, uh, you know, go for. Um, if I actually select, uh, let's see here, 145, that's, that's pretty good. I'll just hit a nine iron really quick. Now you'll notice that warning down there. It says, please wake up the device. So I've actually ran into this a few times and the Garmin device actually goes to sleep on its own. And one thing that you can do is just go to the unit and just tap the button in the back. And then you'll see it says ready. And I have been able to, for the most part, just use it at that point if it goes to sleep. There were one or two times where I actually had to exit out of the session I was in. So just go back to the main menu and then uh, it was good to go after that. So it does go to sleep if you let it sit for a little while. Let's go ahead and just hit a nine iron out there. Hopefully it uh, doesn't need to be reset. Nope, we're good to go. All right. I actually felt that ball going a little bit right. Um, so kind of, uh, know that, that it read that quite decent and my, you know, distance was, was pretty solid as well. You'll notice that I actually have a different target selected versus where I put my aim. So let me show you how that works. So you can actually select the different targets. See if I can actually get the proper target selected here. There we go and then you can go there, then hit your check mark. So um, I accidentally moved the pin instead of moving the actual uh, target itself. So it's actually a good thing to point out to you guys as I kind of move on the fly here, um, you know, something just to understand. Uh, might as well point that out in the video. So let's go ahead and hit one more shot. All right, so I actually closed the face pretty decent on that one. I actually had that with a little bit of a draw. That's kind of what I've been noticing with the unit is even though the distances and everything are pretty solid, I've noticed the spin number is low. My nine iron definitely spins higher than that. So you can get a little longer uh, distance out of a club if it has lower spin. All right, so uh, it just depends on the club you're hitting. Um, I've actually noticed sometimes on driver, and I'll hit a driver here, we'll go out to the uh, course and, and play a hole or two. Um, sometimes it reads that just a little bit higher. Irons, it can read a little bit lower, like wedges and nine iron, eight iron, things like that. So 
it might be affecting the distance there a little bit. I mean, generally my carry is not 149 on my nine iron. Um, generally it's about 140 to 145. So a little demonstration for you guys, but the side spin number is the one that I've been paying attention to the most. And I'm going to plan on talking to Garmin. Everybody asked in the, in the first video that I did, am I on the latest update? Yes, I'm on the latest update. 3.6 is the latest update. Hopefully there'll be some new firmware coming and we'll see how that goes. Uh, you know, if it actually is going to improve that side spin number that seems to be just a little bit off. So let's go to play golf. Let's go to guest stroke play. I'm going to go out to Wade Hampton. I just think this is a cool course it, and the elevation isn't like insane. Um, it's kind of challenging though. Get that to load up here. Check out this first hole. You have to kind of aim down to this little skinny part down here. So it can be quite challenging to get a ball in the fairway. Grab my driver, got a T sitting here. I had a lot of people ask, well, what about if you put a metal dot on the ball? And that shouldn't make a difference. And I'll verify that with Garmin. That's why they're not telling you to put a metal dot on the ball because they're not actually measuring the spin of the ball. They're actually using data points that this is reading and they are uh, calculating the spin based on those data points. All right, that's why they have the margin of error there. Um, so just understand, you know, $599 unit, it's not measuring the spin of the ball. Let's see if I can actually hit a driver here. Not too bad. Oh, see what happened? And you know, the elevation took that ball further than I expected as well. I actually did have that ball with a draw. It was a little bit towards the toe. Um, so uh, I believe it read that drive correctly from what I could feel. I mean, obviously you have to understand that, um, you know, I'm going off of what I think happened. Now this is gonna be challenging. 229 yards, you can see where, you know, I'm almost gonna have to aim a little bit further right maybe, like over there maybe. And then I'm thinking about playing like a three hybrid draw if I can get it up over that hill. It's a par five. So, I mean, really all we have to do, and let's see if it's going to read this draw. So I'm going to aim a little bit right. It's a good example for you guys. Oh, it hit the hill. It's not a good example. <laughs> I think it had it taking off with that draw. Um, I was wondering if I could get it lifted up over that. That's okay. I told you that first tee was uh, challenging. All right, 86 yards. I should be able to get a 58 up there. That was struck quite well. Might be too much. Spin back. There we go. And then now, another thing to point out, just in case you're researching the unit and you're not, you're not aware, uh, the unit does not offer putting. Okay. So, um, you use either an auto putt player selects computer decides. I have it on an auto putt system right now. Um, so it actually gave me a two putt from 11.9 feet. Uh, you know, I, I would think that most of the time I could make those putts on the simulator. I feel like putting is a little bit easier on the sim. Um, so just understand that there are different things you can even, I've seen people have a little putting green, all right, or you could have some cups inside the sim. When you have a 12 foot putt, try to set that 12 foot, put, uh, foot putt up. If you make it, you can do player to sides. All right, and you can actually uh, kind of mix in some virtual with uh, actual golf in your sim. So let's play another hole. All right, it had that ball taken off low and I hit that low on the face. So I knew it was going to launch lower. Wasn't a great strike. Glad to see that. I had it going pretty straight. So I feel like that was a pretty good read. That was uphill too. 138. So it, and this is where I'm going to hit a pitching wedge because to the front of the green, and you can do this really easily, just so you know, just go over to your iPad or whatever you're using. And you can just uh, see how I'm touching the mini map. It's only 129 to the front of the green. I would assume this is gonna release a little bit. It's not gonna be a high spinning wedge. Uh, so, because it carries us a little bit farther in my opinion, let's see if I can get a pitching wedge up close. I struck that pretty well. 
See, there's that extra distance. Come back a little. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that ball was a little bit thin. So, I mean, yeah, it could have had some, some added distance. Carry 142, not really with my pitching wedge. I mean, I think most of you would know that. So, um, let's see what we can do on this hole. Why not play one more? So it's 186, downhill eight feet. What a challenging hole. With the wall, uh, water off to the you know short left there, um, really short layup area. I'm gonna try to play like a smooth six iron. I mean, getting it on the green here, I think is, uh, you know, a feat in its own. It's a nice strike. It has to get down though, way deep, way deep. I'm trying to remember how far downhill that was. I don't remember. Oh, I'd have to go back and check that out. I mean, I struck that really well, and obviously it went really deep. All right, so we're out of the bunker. I don't have penalties turned on, um, so it's a 31-yard chip. Good example for you guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I striped that six iron there, but, I, but you can tell it was downhill. I'll have to go back in the video and look. You guys can obviously see um, 31 yards. What can we do here? Look at this. Oh, we almost hold out. Within two feet, that's gonna be par. I'll take that. I mean, I had no warm up. I'm not gonna lie. I was spending a lot of time getting this all set up. I hit like three balls out in the practice range. So, hey, we're even uh, through three holes here. I gave you guys a great demonstration. I mean, the, the key here is I want you guys to comment below like you always do. Let me know what you wanna see. You wanna see different courses, I'll show them to you. Why don't I do this really quick? Why don't I show you a flyby on the uh, iPad? There you go. This is what a flyover looks like on the iPad 11 Pro, okay? iPad Pro 11 inch, whatever you wanna call it does have a much higher GPU than like a normal iPad or iPad Air. Um, you're never going to change the graphics. This question comes up all of the time. You're not going to change the graphics per device. They're going to display it the same. Now, sure, the resolution on the screen might be a little better, but it doesn't actually improve the graphics themselves. The graphics stay the same, all right? Um, but the smoothness of the video and things along those lines, that is dependent on that GPU of the iPad. So something to understand, that question comes up all the time. But I'd love to know what you guys think. I hope this was a great first look and review of the Garmin Approach R10 launch monitor, okay, with E6 Connect Golf Simulator software. Love to know what else you guys would like to see. Uh, I think next we'll go out and we'll play some holes on the Garmin app. That's the GPS rendered courses that they have where you can go out and play some courses. I was thinking of even playing maybe my uh, local course here that I know so well. So I'll be able to see kind of like what it's, what it's like to play. So um, you guys got to see a very, uh, you know, variation of shots there. So hopefully it kind of gave you an idea what it was looking like. I'm going to go back in the video and see what the elevation was on that par three. Because I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I striped that six iron and I, I can get a six iron, you know, upwards of 190 if I stripe it that much, you know, flush it. Um, and so it, it probably carried, you know, a little bit further than that, but um, we'll have to check that out. But I think overall, pretty darn good experience. I mean, I want you guys to understand that that iOS version with your iPad, uh, you buy the Garmin R10 and then get these free courses. You could have a lot of fun. $599 portable launch monitor. Um, I understand it's not perfect. I don't expect perfection in this type of dollar range, um, but maybe they can improve some of the things that we've seen and uh, it could be a really fun device. And I'm excited to take it outside. I was mentioning that in the previous videos. This is in a short indoor environment. It has limited flight. It'll be interesting to see what it can do outside. So please comment below. Let me know what you guys think and what you wanna see. Make sure to bring you as much as I can real soon. So stay tuned. Thank you.